Uh, this is sort of like an intro if you've never used Skyward before. Uh, maybe some of you do have Skyward accounts for your students. Uh, maybe you've never logged into them. Maybe you have some information, but it got lost in an email somewhere, and now you have no idea what's going on. Um, this is for you. So if you're in, you're in that boat, we're going to... I had trouble getting on the phone. I was always in, the, yep. in there. I found the You're in the right the spot. Then. Yep, yeah, you're in the right yeah. spot. Then. We'll take you through all that stuff. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go over some of the basic functionality in here, and I know Ms. Fennick and uh, Mr. Stubenbart, they'll jump in periodically. But at the end, when we get through doing all the different functionality and we talk through um, a little bit about what Skyward can do, what, what it can't do, um, I'm gonna, I have these forms for everybody. So if you're not currently signed up with your school site at Skyward, I'm going to give you one of these. You're going to fill this out, and you'll give it back to me, and I actually can make an account for you. Um, probably won't be active tonight, but as of tomorrow it will be if you're not logged in with, with all your stuff, okay? Um, just know that if you don't have a Skyward account right now, if you don't have family access, um, this needs to be filled out. This is the form that's passed out at all the different school sites, so I can't just go on and, and make your account real quick. They make me do this first, okay, just to verify, all right? Any questions so far? All right. So on all the computers, you guys should see the Skyward login screen there. That should be on every single one of them. Uh, I'm just going to ask that don't try to log in um, right now and, and look at all the different stuff. We'll, we'll do that later, okay? So for right now, before I get started and before Mr. Stubenborg walks away because he's sort of like a bouncer, um, I would like to introduce them. I know they just got introduced in the cafeteria, but I am Mr. Koch. I'm from Citrus Springs Middle School. This is my sixth year at the school. Uh, I'm the media specialist this year, but before that I taught sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade, uh, advanced language arts, regular language arts, and uh, that's kind of my background. Uh, Ms. Lauren Fennick, she's over at Inverness Middle School. She's one of my awesome ELA go-to people. Um, we planned a lesson last year where we did a Holocaust unit. We kind of Skyped with each other. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Alex Stubenbord, he's at Lacanto Middle School. He's another ELA guru who's doing awesome stuff. So if you guys have any questions at the end, you know, we'd be happy to answer them. So. Any questions right now? All right. So this is sort of like an introduction to uh, Skyward, and if you've never used it before, one of the easiest way to get, ways to get there is if you go to our uh, Citrus County website, it's kind of buried, the link is kind of buried at the bottom, it's not in one of the menus up top, and you'd think that it would be, it's all the way at the bottom under where it says parents, and there's a family access link there, but someone very nicely gave us another URL to use, and if you guys want to write this down so you can always have access to it, this is the computer way to access Skyward. If you write down this address, it's bit.ly slash citrus skyward. It'll take you right where you need to go. So you don't need to go hunting for that link. Every day when I'm taking attendance, sometimes if I don't have it bookmarked, I'm like, where is it? I don't know where. Oh, I just know that I have to type that in. So it's bit.ly slash citrus skyward. Skyward is the application that the school district uses for a ton of stuff. We use it for grades. All, your, all the teachers put in grades there, uh, and they're available online for teachers and students to look at and parents to look at. It's the way that we schedule parent conferences. It's the way, it's, uh, the way that the students can look at what's coming up next on their academic pet calendar if there's assignments put in by the teacher. So it's like the online hub for everything going on in the school to track everything that's going on. Did anybody need that up there still? Okay, so that's how you get there. Um, there's two other ways to get there, depending if you have an iOS device like an iPhone, if you have an iPad at home. I know all students that are in the middle schools have one-to-one -one access now. So they have the Skyward app on their device. So you can download it from the App Store if you have an iOS device, if you just search for Skyward in the App Store, or if you are on an Android phone or an Android device, it's in the Google Play Store. If you search for Skyward in there, it's the same thing. So you can download both. You'll be able to see the same information on there. You'll be able to access all the same stuff. Although the mobile apps have a little bit more limited functionality, which means if you access Skyward on a computer and you're on a web browser, there's a lot more information you can kind of blow up and see, as opposed to like a little mobile screen where you can kind of just pull up a couple different things. All right, so you can't, you're not really gonna get the full sweet experience on these mobile apps. but. Um, I have the Skyward app on my phone, so if I'm walking around the classroom and my iPad's over there and my computer's over there, I can just take the phone out, take attendance very quickly, and then put it away. Um, so you can access the same stuff on these mobile devices. You can see your students' grades um, and things like that. So if you want to download the app, it's in both app stores. And Windows. 
and Windows Phone. I didn't even know that. So it's on Windows Phone. Also. I just I just found it. Oh, okay. Awesome. That's, that's great. great. No, that's great. 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 Thanks, Thanks for sharing. I'll add that to the slide for next time. Um, so, and I can kind of bypass this right now. Does anybody need me to keep these up? These are just QR codes. That if there's a reader on your device where you can scan these, it'll take you directly to the app, whether you have an Apple iPhone or you have an Android phone. We'll get to that a little bit later. So, how I access Skyward <coughs> is I usually do it from a computer, and I have a web browser up, and I will pull up Skyward on my uh, computer. And there's a space for login ID, and then there's a space for password. It's different for teachers. It's, it's, the password is, is, is different for students. And then the parent access login is also different. So all three are different. I'm going to display, I'm going to explain the difference between the three. So if you are a parent, again, after you fill out that form and we verify, and then we can make your account for you, the general uh, way that we set up accounts is your, your login is going to be your first name dot last name. Your password, it's going to ask you on that form to provide an email address to us that's currently working. Please make sure that it's currently working and you can receive email from it. Um, I say that because a lot of times, sometimes I'll forget my email password, and then if it's not saved on my phone, I have to go through a reset link, and sometimes I'll forget. So make sure, yeah, make sure that it's that you provide us with, with an email address that's on file. So when we set up your account, you'll receive an email from Skyward with a link in there and it will, you'll be able to change your password and you'll be able to log in with your first name, not last name and then that new password that you've made. Um, again, I wish it were easier. I wish I could just willy-nilly go in and just make your account for you but we need to verify that that's your student and things like that. Yes? That first name, dot last name, it looks all lowercase, no spaces. Good. That's correct. Yeah. It's all lowercase, first name, dot last name. Good question. Well, yep. one thing that I want to point out too is, is you know something that we do with our kids in class if there's any slide, feel free to take a picture of it with your phone or your iPad. Um, did you say that already? No, but feel free to do but, that. Yeah, you that would be a great way to, to kind of get a snapshot real quick of what you're looking at because I know I'll forget as soon as I leave the room, you know. And you feel free to do that. I'll just and go back. Take. If you want to go back or whatever, let us know. I'll assume you're taking my picture. <laughs> <laughs> well, he does look like Tom Cruise. <laughs> Doesn't he? In yeah. the younger, in the younger, younger day, day, yes. Yes. Because he's getting real old. He is, yeah. So, <laughs> not, not. <laughs> 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 all right, all right, I'm no, sorry. Keep going. All right, just something I wanted to add was this was the first year I had family access as a parent. Um, and one of the issues I found over the summer as a tech, I was like, why can I not access Skyward? So keep in mind <laughs> that if you do have a student, if you have an upcoming kindergarten or something like that, um, I, I wasn't able to access this until like guidance was back in. So in July, I'm like, oh, I can't even see a schedule. It intentionally does go down over the summer. So if you do find that you're not able to get in, that's why. Okay, so periodically, you know, we'll do updates and things like that. So you will counter those times where the system does go down. It's nothing you've done. It's just something going on. It's not like your information's gone or anything. Like right. that. You're, you're still in our system. Sometimes I'll do maintenance things with something right. like that, though. And, and when all else fails, remember that your students have access, your, your kids have access to this as well. Um, so they will know their um, passwords better than you know your passwords because they're going to be on it every period of every day, checking their grades, making sure. I mean, honestly, the kids are obsessed with their grades now that they can access them regularly. And now that they've gotten, um, yeah, now that they've gotten really good at remembering their login information, and their logins are their student ID number, and it's their eight-digit birth date. Um, they can go in and change their password if they want. A lot of times they'll just leave this as is. But they are, like I'll have, I'll put in an assignment, and if I don't put in the grade immediately when the student gives it to me, why is my grade not in there? Yeah, so if you ever forget your so password at home, they will know theirs, and they'll be able to yes, get you access to their grade book and to the grade lessons. Mm -hmm. And if a student ever forgets their password, we as teachers can go into our teacher portal and we can reset it very, very easily for them. So they'll always have access. What grades time. are using this already? Um, as in terms of the one-to-one -one grades, the grades six through eight, but I mean the, the service is open to any grade, any grade level. I mean even the high schoolers that don't have their iPads yet or they don't have a one-to-one -one device, they can go home and they have, as far as I know, student access. Well, um, so it's mainly middle schoolers on walks. You're saying that's you know, my son's in first grade, and I just thought yeah. like he doesn't know anything about that. Right, right, right. <laughs> no, I agree with that. Family, yes. 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 Right, and that's kind of the thing. The family access is available to all parents. 
But the student access, obviously, like you're saying. I, I think it's usually sixth grade. They might introduce it in fifth grade in some schools. Um, but right now, it's, it's primarily the sixth middle school. to 12th grade. Well, I know he does yeah, we teach middle school. Yeah, we teach middle school. Yeah, yeah, so last year, they had the reading aid thing, and he had to log in. And yeah. Had, and I was like, wow. Uh, I was shocked in kindergarten. He had this all log in. And Family access is over there. He's in fourth and he knows he knows to vlog in info now, so they're dark and younger. Mm -hmm. But it's not a bad idea to share it with them so they get familiar with the way it looks. So when the time does come, it's not such a shock, you know, because when they do have that transition. Well, I think it's good they know their they, they see oh, yeah. it and then they can yeah. yeah. with them and share it. Like, exactly. Great point. Exactly. My kid can operate my phone and stuff better than me. <laughs> well, and that's the reality of the generation we live yeah. is that we all are transitioning into this world of technology. Our kids have lived it. They're, they don't know anything different. No, and if you uh, think that's about why it, it's important for us to catch up as no. much as we can. You and know? if you think about it, this is the, the technology they have now, that's the worst piece of technology they're going to have. Yeah. It blows me away. Right. Yeah. The iPhone 6S is yeah. the worst piece of tech I've ever had. Yeah. So it's only going to work away. Yeah. <laughs> So when you log in, um, students will see a little bit differently, but there's an entire hub of things as parent access uh, has on the left. So you can, do, you can view things like the calendar like I was talking about, um, your students' current grades, you can look at attendance if they're tardy ever, um, and there's a whole bunch of different things on here if they've ever had any disciplinary uh, things that are on there that's logged on Skyward as well. Um, they have their entire academic history, so if you want to look up a class maybe that they dropped or what teacher that was, you can, you can look at that also. Um, and there's a whole bunch of different stuff on there, and, and if you allow it to, you can really get in deep, and you can be you can be tracking a whole bunch of stuff about your student. And I would get in the habit of, you know, when they get home, you should be like, hey, what assignments do you have? And if they say, oh, nothing, well, let's check on Skyward. Maybe maybe you have something that you weren't really uh, sure about, or maybe you do have something. So let's double check. So Speaking from right. classroom experience, so we're all classroom teachers. Yes. You know, one of the biggest things is the kids will say, well, I don't have any homework. Well, technically they don't, but they have classwork they haven't finished in class. If we get on Skyward, we can see those things mm -hmm. as parents. And so that's one trick that I've used with my kids mm -hmm. uh, as well. But you don't have homework I if you haven't have finished your classwork yes. either. You, know? you don't think that may be infringing on, on their, you know, their personality or growing up a little bit or something like that? No, I think it's just a question. So they yeah. need that guidance and they do need that parent input to come, you know, because kids very easily can get off track. I, just, I mean, it's something that right. any other teacher would have access and to. And the grades, yeah. they're not published for, like, yeah. we don't show the entire class. Okay. Well, maybe I'm growing just, up in the old school. Yeah, but, yeah. like, all you see and all the kids see are what pertains to them. Anything else, like, mm -hmm. you know, if his buddy mm -hmm. got a 50 on the test and he got a 60, we wouldn't see that, you know. The focus really is, it's student driven. It's what can we take from this to improve experience. Well, and you have to think kids. of it too is in our day, we get a grade, a mid day grade, you know, report card, maybe an F. Well, how much better we, we would have figured that out, you know, before midterm or in between mm -hmm. and been able to tell the teacher to fix it so we didn't get that. Instead of just saying, oh, I got an F, you know, and move on. And back before, you'd have to wait for either the progress report to get home yeah. and hope that it makes it home and not in garbage. Right. right. You know, then you have to wait for your report card to get home. So I do see your time. point, though. Right. But, but on you know, that, what you're saying. Also I would trust my son enough to yeah. tell me. Right. And that's individual and things. I don't want to pry right. on his right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. And the parenting <laughs> style can also be a, a big piece of this, wherever you're saying, hey, this is your responsibility to come exactly. to me right. and tell me when, what grades are hurting, when they're hurting. And if you don't do that, well, I'm going to step in at that point. Is that where you okay. kind of can lay out those expectations? Yeah, you can choose not to look at them. Uh, Great question. You have the ear muff so you don't hear all our secrets. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize how I wasn't supposed to bring No, no, that's great. That's good for him to see. Mm -hmm. So again, he's yeah. not the only child who's got parents that care. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So again, I mean, you can see their their grades that they have for their current quarter. You can see what they had at midterm. That P1 means progress at that, for that quarter. And then you can see sort of where they're at later on. Um, if a grade hasn't been posted yet, there, there will be like a little icon that's like a little book icon. So if you tap or click on that, you can see currently what their assignments are and sort of where they're falling in terms of completing things or what they have that's missing. Um, when you log in right here in red on the top, it'll say this student based on these grades that they have, here's the stuff that's missing. So if you pull this up and be like, hey, you know, Johnny, what about uh, this one assignment that's on the ninth that you were supposed to turn in? What about that? It just, I mean, it's another way that you can kind of look and, and keep track. Calendar is something that they will use a lot. I see my students when they do student access, and you're, as 
the family access when you go in and you can see the entire calendar that they see. It has all their assignments. Um, teachers will post lesson plans on here so you can see what they're doing in, in class and they'll usually post them as attachments. So if you want to know what your student's going to be learning, you can go on there and through the message center, which is something else you can do, you can see plans that are posted, you can see upcoming assignments at a glance on here. It's like a lot of times I'll look at my, my calendar uh, on my phone and just to keep me on track, this is a way that you can keep your student on track and just see what's going on with them at a glance instead of just by the day. You can see, oh, you know, on the, the 9th you have something that's due, so make sure that you're doing that. But, uh, calendar is really awesome here. And students look at this too. Wish I had my Um, if you click on a specific assignment, it'll show you even more details about it, like when it was assigned, um, what teacher assigned it, what grade that they got on it, if it was currently graded, and uh, even show you the school that they're at, in case you forgot. <laughs> uh, and you notice there, too, you know, for, for more tech-savvy folks, it has an export to personal calendar. So say you want to put a reminder in your phone's calendar, say, hey, you got that big project coming up, or you got to test that two weeks from now, so you remember to remind them. That's a way you don't have to keep going back into Skyward. You can put it into your calendar. And I think this link talks to most most phones or most yeah. devices. It's it's universal, so it'll just put itself in, in your personal calendar so you can look at that and not have to log in all the time. And to speak to his point, well, now how do you arm your student to be a successful student in this day and age? Well, teach them these things. Hey, you can export that calendar into your uh, calendar, and now you know when your assignments are coming up, and it's being sent to you on your iPad. That, that arms them with the keys to success. So it's not just <coughs> that we're snooping on you. We want you to be successful in this. Yeah, we're too to do that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Time management. Mm -hmm. Being proactive. Mm -hmm. And that's a skill that takes time to learn, too. Even as adults, time management is always a thing that you're constantly improving on. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you good? Yeah, thank you. Um, if you have multiple uh, children that are in the same school, or you have one that's in one school, one that's in the other, on that form that I'm going to give you guys later, if you're not signed up in Skyward, you can put both or any of the multiple children that you have on here, and you'll be able to view them one at a time through family access. So right over here where it says all students, you can see, if you click that, you'll see a breakdown of all your children that are in the, the school system, or if you want to just do a breakdown of one individual, you can see all that stuff from just that one child. Um, so that's... <clears throat> Excuse me. I think there's a little box that pops up here if you click next. There you go. And that's just what I just said. So. <laughs> I knew there was something else. Yeah. I think there's a box here too. Okay. Um, again, so when you're reviewing grades, you can see a breakdown of missing assignments like we went over before. Um, anything that they're uh, currently working on in class and things that are assigned to them. Um, this really helped a lot of my students last year. Uh, what you can do is, if there is something that the teacher puts in as missing, and you can set this up as complicated or as simple as you want, if you provide an email address or even your cell phone number, you can get notifications based on what you tell Skyward to notify you on. So let's say that a teacher, like let's say your, your child's teacher puts in, oh, here's a missing assignment, that goes in as a zero. The minute that that happens and they save the grade, you'll get a notification in your email saying, this was entered as a zero. That's what you want to be notified on. And you can go in through this notifications tab on the left when you log in, and you can provide that. And you can get it, like I said, you can get it as specific with this as you want. Like, I want to know when the emergency hours are. I want to know anything that happens with attendance, things like that. I want to get notified. Um, or you can get as simple as you want. It's like, I only want to know when my students' grades are zeros. And you can be as simple as that. Okay? And I would, I would do that last year. I would, I would input things that are... Uh, that were zero or that were missing, and then the next, later on that period, oh man, my mom saw that, and now I <coughs> maybe study, Mr. K. I'm sorry, yes. your parents are, are checking it. Um, so basically, what I, I put these pictures in, it's and I, even when I was younger, old school in terms of what my parents would kind of use to check on me with my grades. It was either they would look in some sort of agenda, if my teacher signed it that something was due, they would have to dig that out of my backpack. And, flip through, what's the day, did your teacher stamp it, things like that, see if something was due. Um, they would either receive a phone call from my teacher saying that, and I would never have phone calls, but some people probably did, and they would call home and then they would say, so-and-so is missing this assignment, we need to schedule a conference, or you'd wait for the report card to come home and then you'd say, you know, why didn't you pay more attention in class? And 
those things still work, so they're not technologies that aren't beneficial, but there are better ways now just because we have the tech in the schools. We have the access for you guys. So if you go to the next one, <clears throat> we all have um, access to some sort of digital device at some point during the day. We have things like Khan Academy, which is an online uh, course and it's completely free if you're, if you're needing some homework help and you're studying something like fractions and then your student is just not getting it. They have breakdowns by grade level, by subject area, and they have tutors that are on here. It's completely free. You can use this to help with homework and things that they're learning in class and just reinforce at home. What was the name of that again? Khan Academy. I'll put Khan. that on yeah, I'll put that on the board. Uh, it's K-A-A. It should be in the app catalog. Mm -hmm. I can tell you all about it. Well, the students don't have the well, students don't have the iPad. I used to know it. This is true. And it's device friendly, you can access it on a computer too. Um, we have things like Skyward Mobile Access, like I told you guys about before. So you can just, if you have a phone, you can just look at that stuff up when you're sitting at the bus, uh, the bus line. You're just waiting and you can check on there. Um, Skyward Family Access, you can schedule conferences on the fly. If you have a phone, you can do it on there. And this may seem silly, but YouTube is an excellent act. It's an, huge resource and there are a ton of educators that are on there that are posting their little mini lessons and, and whether it be grammar, whether it be math, whether it be science, they're posting what they're doing in their classrooms for anybody to see at any time. Khan Academy is very YouTube. Yeah, Khan Academy is it's an offshoot of YouTube, excellent. And, and so, I mean, if you go through, there's teachers that are like, <coughs> um, do you want to the next Yeah, one? I'm sorry. No, it's okay. There's people that, that just do ESL and there, there's just one teacher that goes through, here's how to do phrasal verbs with uh, meaning to run, and here's an ESL lesson, and they're, they can get very specific or very broad. I mean, you have other people that are working on just sentence structure, and then, and when I tell you that there's thousands, there are teachers that are posting this stuff on their own YouTube channels. ESL is English Second Language, in case you can pick up on that. Sorry, I just, I got, I got <laughs> You get so caught life. up in the yeah. 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 I forgot where I was for some reason. <laughs> um, have, I mean, we have, like I said, you have just math. You have, you have a ton of people that are offering what they're doing in their classroom. They want to share that with as many people as, that, as possible, and it's free. So when you're trying to help with homework, when you're looking at Skyward for all these different things, when you're checking on your students' grades, a couple of like question starters that I would start asking at home, and these can just be reinforcement questions. It doesn't have to be. You don't have to ask all these every day. But things like, you know, do you understand what you're supposed to do on your homework? Did you get it? Are you not? Is that what's preventing you from doing it? You're not sure what you're supposed to do? Do you need help in understanding how to do it? Do you have any problems like the ones that you're supposed to do right now? Are you doing those in class? Because maybe you can look at an old assignment and say, oh, okay, well, we did this in class already. Let me take a look at that. Um, do you ever need, do you have everything you need to do the assignment? Sometimes they're like, well, I don't know how to do this. Well, what did you, did you do in class? Oh, we use this app. Well, maybe we should use that right now. Let's see. Um, and does your answer make sense to you? Don't just, you know, if they're just trying to get done with the homework as quickly as possible just so they're done. Reinforce. Does this make sense? Is this what you did in class? Okay. So that's a general overview <coughs> of Skyward, what it can do. Again, it can be as specific as you want. If you want to just look at grades on there, it's perfect just for that too. So it can be as functional as you want it to be. Um, if you have a QR code reader, that's those readers that can read these uh, funky little doodads up on the screen. Um, if you want to look at any of those slides again, that's a link to this presentation. Google Docs and Choice. Mm -hmm. That will uh, take you there also, that URL, that goo.gil address. And if you want to look at digitally, if you want a copy of this PDF, this Skyward Family Access Form that I'm going to give you guys, if you want to just have it digitally, so in case you lose that, you can print it out. That will take you to that, and this address will also take you to the PDF for the Skyward Access.